Hello everyone in podcast land. It's me again, Joe Espana, and welcome to another edition of Gobbo. That's Glimpses of the Blindingly Obvious. Now, I don't know if it's sheer coincidence, but I seem to have been doing a lot of work in recent years with intact teams. And as sure as eggs are eggs, sooner or later, the conversation in the room turns to the team leader's style and how that can impact on the team. And I knew straight away who I would like to invite for a natter. Gary Blissett. You may have come across him in LinkedIn land. And if not, you ought to check him out. My pal Gary and I go back 33 years to when we were young and still relatively fresh-faced, working at an international airline. But he's a man of many parts, one of which I only discovered recently, that he's a qualified national swimming referee. Dark horse are Gary. In his career, Gary has held a number of operational roles. He's also been a national account manager and headed up sales operations and development functions. Nowadays, Gary runs his own behavioral assessment and development consultancy and has worked with several blue chip organizations, helping them with behavioral development, management and leadership, team development, and of course, coaching. So I'm particularly thrilled to have my old pal join me to discuss our focus for today, personal style, understanding your behavioral style and its impact on your team leadership. You know, not all leaders lead from charging from the front. You know, some are quietly working in the background by supporting and developing others in a particular way. Some leaders develop this um, more sort of conscientious type approach where it's a data-driven decision-making process they use in that in that particular way. You know, all of these work. They all work absolutely. Um, and one of the interesting things, particularly about the model that we use, Everything Disc, is there is no correlation between your disc style and your competence or success in your job role. And, and I think that's a really important message. And not everybody gets that or believes that. It's, that is really, re I'm so glad you raised that point. I play a little game with uh, uh, participants um, very often before I get into either sharing out their assessment reports or even uh, describing anything. I ask the question, I say, and I actually write down their, their, their responses on a flip chart. And I say, okay, where do you think you've, where's, what's the origin of your leadership success? And I would say between eight and nine times out of the 10, what they come back with is, is descriptions of competence. So therefore, I know something or can do something or I've got experience on something. I'm always, well, may, maybe I'm not shocked anymore. <laughs> I do think it's sort of amusing that it's all about, you know, my years of experience and knowledge and skills rather than who I am and how I operate. And am I able to flex my, the way I operate? Can I adapt to a range of people that I'm supposed to be leading? You know, um, it's, it's, it's I, it, I always, I don't want to play gotcha in the game, but I, but I do, I do reflect this back, you know, so, so, you know, out of, we, we fill a complete flip chart with their responses and I go, and then I, then I highlight, you know, isn't it interesting out of this entire flip chart, there's only three items there that are about, you know, you, 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 you care about how you communicate to different mm -hmm. people or, uh, um, you're, you know, you're, you're mindful to communicate clearly the results that we're supposed to be achieving or um you create a supportive or maybe you know the, the phrase is used a lot now isn't it is um psychological safety so you create an environment where people can speak up you know it's usually about oh well i've done you know my career was about 30 years in this particular sector and i've done most jobs and uh, i'm qualified in x y and z i always smile to myself yeah. about that yeah no, I, I think it's it, it, it's very common is that people that look back and measure their success based on where they've been in the past um, or, or what they're striving to achieve now. I get I get that, too, um, rather than maybe those transferable or embedded, inbuilt, innate behavioral skills 
that have allowed them to be successful and get to where they want to be. And I think it's that it's that question of sort of why, 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 if you dive down. Yeah. Well, why have you been successful? Eventually you will get to, oh, hang on, this is because I treat everybody with respect or I have this ability to be agile in the way that I communicate with, with others. So I think it's you have to sort of dive deeper down amongst all of those, don't you? The other question I love to ask very often uh, in these kind of circumstances, I say, you know, how do you deal with performance reviews or any kind of conversation with different team members when the subject that you're talking about, they're looking at it from a completely different angle to you? And then the, you're not you're not able to somehow get to the same place with them. How do you deal with that? Yeah. And so we then it sort of emerges this the whole issue of, you know, uh, how adaptable or versatile we might be in terms of those com- conversations and tackling it a little bit from their point of view. It's really interesting that we uh, I think in a lot of organizations, my experience would be, I'd be interested to see what you think, but my experience would be we're really good at setting up procedures, processes, systems things that need to be done so like performance review like you know the succession plan like the budget and everything else but we often forget the mechanism the the human mechanism that has to be applied in in utilizing those processes and systems and i think performance review conversations or any kind of that sphere kind of conversations requires us to maybe tackle it differently just because i've got a different person in front of me yeah absolutely and uh, uh, the word performance review joe fills me gives me a little shiver in all all these years (laughs) in all these years that that we've been been doing this and working in this in this environment in this space you know it it terrifies me that performance reviews so many times now i still see as this tick box exercise where people have these forced conversations once, maybe maybe twice a year, um, in order to you know influence whether it's a, a percentage increase in in pay, oh, or God, yeah. recognition, or job promotion. And, and for me, you know, performance reviews, the the time has come to desperately move on from these and and actually make them more informal, make them focused on you know, is this person competently and confidently doing the job that they are contracted and paid to do? And for me, it is as simple as that. And and the conversation there is actually about, you know, you're really good at what you do, Joe. How do I keep you here? <laughs> how do I how do I keep you in this organization? And you know, and, and sort of the I, I was looking at some some research that was was done the other day um from uh, Wiley. Wiley, who the publisher of this, they do a lot of insights, they're a big publisher in the States, do a lot of uh, insight research, you know, and Things that really appear to be important to people at the moment are work flexibility. Well, there's no no surprise there. I probably don't want to go down that that rabbit hole right now. Um, Opportunities to connect with other people outside of work. So, you know, that ability to drive networks. Listening. You know, people, you know, want to stay in organisations because they felt heard from what they do. And then finally, of course, recognition. Those were the four key things that people were saying. And, And actually, for me... If your performance review conversation is based on have you done what you were expected to do? Um, now let's talk about how do we keep you here for the next 12 months by using these sorts of things and, and give you more opportunities to, to be able to do those rather than this rather ridiculous, you know, on a like a scale of one to five. Are you a four or are you a three? And should we debate that? You know, and and then we go away. Well, we'll agree to disagree. I just think I I, I have an issue, as you can tell, with performance appraisal. Uh, I'm I'm totally with you. I'm totally with you. Luckily, as you say, there is a movement to go away, move away from those yeah. uh, those sorts of conversations. I remember way when I started my career in 1982. That's that's how old I am. But I can remember way back then there used to be a thing called managing by walking about mm. and it was like, like a really big thing you know yeah. oh you've got to manage by walking about um which you know i kind of quite like but i, I don't seem to hear it that much no. and it occurs to me you know if you let's say you and my 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 line manager and you said okay joe well next next thursday we're going to have a uh 
a, a, a performance review chat. Already I'm panicking because I can't remember what I did two weeks ago. Never mind what I did at the beginning of the year. And so, and, and I might be able to point to an outcome. So, yes, I completed that task. But I have, I would never be able to remember what was the input, what was the behavioral input that contributed or not to the, to the producing whatever it was. And mm -hmm. I think that this managing by walking about and creating connection and listening really hearing people i think it's an absolute need i don't yeah. know whether i don't know what do you think about this i there, there is a, a feeling out there i don't know whether there's any empirical evidence on this but there is definitely a feeling that one of the things that covid did was to accelerate and come uh, bring to the fore a lot more all the things that people in employment really want from their employer and yeah. it would be those things that you just listed yeah. and i think that that's become really very very obvious and tricky to do by the way particularly if you're a remote worker or you're you're in a hybrid way you're not you're not making that sort of in-person connection with your teammates and with your line manager or anything else so i'm not saying it's easy to do but it's really necessary in order to get get the the best out of people, and I and I just feel that a lot of managers are still struggling struggling with that, you know, yeah. and and achieving the achieving wrong word satisfying is perhaps a better word satisfying those needs and in, in inverted commas. Tell me, do you? I, I don't want to unpick performance reviews and performance management. Do you think, in terms of styles? same sort of question really do you think that there is a a best style for managing a, a performance review given that they do exist mm. yeah I, i'm gonna i'm gonna refer you to your earlier answer your honor and go back to let's talk about managing by walking about for a second because i think that in itself as a concept has massive um benefits but also challenges because of styles and, and I actually remember many years ago, I wasn't long after you and I, when I started, um, speaking to a, a, somebody who was, was trying to embrace this new way of, of managing and leading by getting out of their, you know, in those days, office, you know, closed door offices in a long, in a long corridor. And they sort of said, well, you know, I, I do this all the time. And I said, and what do you do during this managing by walking about? And they said, well, I just walk about and visit each person on the desk and sort of give them a little nod and say, how are you doing? I, said, I find it all really awkward because I don't know what to talk about. <laughs> and, and I thought, well, there you go. There is this issue again about, you know, even something like managing by walking about requires this adaptability and the flexibility. Those people who have naturally that innate ability to connect, to network, to have a conversation, those eye styles potentially that might find that more comfortable, those social interactions, um, are going to love managing by walking about. Um, those who might have the, the C styles, the conscientiousness styles that actually, you know, struggle a little bit with, with those conversations unless they're going to be you know, evidential based or they're, they're a conversation about something that they've researched in advance are going to find that very difficult. And and so I think, and obviously, before I answer your other question, that also has an impact on the person that is now being hovered over. So if someone is now hovering over my shoulder, either physically or virtually, and we've got this sort of awkward conversation going on, it's like, why are you here? You're just doing this to tick a box, yeah, rather than actually genuinely wanting to find out how my day's going, what can I help you with, what can I support you with, what can what challenges can I help you overcome today? So, yeah, the managing by walking about, I think, has a, has a direct impact on, uh, on oh, sorry, the, the approach is influenced by personal styles. I think your question in terms of performance appraisals, I think it's irrelevant what style the leader has, because the conversation needs to be in the style of the person that you are performance appraising. So actually, if that person has... Um, you know, at a, a, a C style. And, I, and Joe, I don't want to just stereotype here because I think what we haven't done is set out our stall that when, when I'm talking or when we're talking about 
personality styles and disc styles everybody is a blend of all of them you know yeah. and that's really important yeah. to recognize so we're talking at the extremes here I, I think but yeah if you're the person you're appraising has a c style and you as the leader have a high i style you know you've got to flex and adapt cut out the chit chat cut out the small talk they might not want today to be talking about you know their social activities over the weekend they might want to another point but now it's about where is the data and the evidence for the conversation that we're about to have around performance yeah let's talk about that let's talk about those those practicalities in a calm measured thought out way where both parties have had time to prepare does that does that make sense oh totally and i'm i'm smiling to myself because the you know you you're so brilliant at uh, pointing out the things that really happen at work so this is sort of you know it's reality so i'm just thinking to myself so here we go we've got a uh, an i style predominant i style um uh, leader of a team leader and the team member is predominantly a C, or a version of a c style mm -hmm. and uh, the the, <laughs> the c style walks in and my comments before about i can't remember Right. with a C, they'll have noted it down. And so they will have the data and be armed with all the data Absolutely. and the proof. This, I did this, 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 and this is how I did it. Whereas the I style, so they, the C style will have come into the conversation. Maybe it's a nine o'clock in the morning meeting and they're like, what's the agenda? What are we going to talk about? I've got, I'm really ready. I've, I've worked myself up over the weekend for this meeting. And the I style go, it's nine o'clock and they'll say, should we get a coffee? Well, yeah. well, how was your weekend, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. <laughs> so Absolutely. already they're like talking French and German with each other. Yeah. So, yeah. so it does make the point, doesn't it, uh, that we were making a, a few moments ago about being able to – we used to say this about uh, – if we're talking about the example of performance reviewing, the, you know, who should be doing most of the talking, and, and hopefully it's the – it's the team member rather than the team leader, sort of getting them to sort of almost self-review most of the the air, take most of the airspace. Um, but it but it does bring us back to this point that we we're saying about being adaptable in our style and sort of flexing um, or reaching out to um, those aspects of our personal style which don't sit completely. In it's the stretch, isn't it? We talk in yeah. this, we talk about stretch that yeah. don't sit in that in the description of our predominant style and sort of trying to stretch out to. It's I talk about when when we when I do this with, with people, I talk about bridges. It's like creating bridges with the other the person at the other side of the bridge that may have some some similarities to you, but in your style, but may have some dissimilarities to your style and it's building a bridge isn't it because that's what creates the glue in the Absolutely. conversation and glue in the conversation and in the relationship you know and feeling oh you know i quite enjoy working for this boss and yeah. uh we sort of sort of muddle along and it's good and it's, i feel like i'm being heard and that kind of stuff yeah yeah, yeah the bridge analogy is a really good one i think and uh I had a conversation recently with a with a, a leader in a, a team that i was working with and and we, and we I used a similar analogy. So you know we're both at either ends of this of this bridge. You know the power from understanding behavioural assessments and your and your inclination comes from your ability to more both of you to be able to move towards the centre. So almost it goes back to where we started this conversation actually about almost both becoming a little more like each other, yeah, in order to make that that connection because you know that's what that's where we started. Um, and the leader said to me. Yeah, but it shouldn't all be about me. It shouldn't be about me having to move. <laughs> yeah. Because actually, why don't, you know, if everybody else moved towards me, then actually this team would, would be much more high performing. And it's like, so where are you moving? You're just going to stand at the end of the bridge. You're not going to move at all. And I think it was, it took a lot to convince that actually you can't change anybody else. You know, so you can only deal with yourself. So you've got to move towards the centre. If that person at the other side doesn't want to, they don't want to make those changes or they don't know how to. They've not been equipped to be able to do that. Then that's your job. 
to equip them to be able to, to to move them by explaining that you know joe i'd like to you know I, I work best when i receive information in this particular way for example or you know i know you love a 25 page report but you know a one page executive summary works better for better for me so you can help equip people with that but i think it's it is important for leaders to understand that it's not all about everybody else and and i think that the biggest um red flag i often get and it's a big misuse of of disc and all other tools is hey i've got a d style that's just the way i am you know oh my god i had that literally in the last couple of weeks where somebody used it as an excuse um the they they said you know i'm i'm an s i'm recognizing myself as an s and that's the way i'm always going to be and not realizing the you know like like all of the styles d i s and c they've got strengths but they've also got some limitations in yeah. terms of in the in the way that kind of like they might be deployed let's say and there's the word that i i kind of try and get people to talk about is the appropriateness may be situational may be to do with people as well, obviously the person that they're interacting with the appropriateness of turning up the gas on that particular style because it's your preference may or may not be appropriate in those given circumstances. Yeah. So I tell you one of the, the other sort of correlated or connected challenges for, for leaders around this, I think. I don't think it's just a, a, a factor of the way that the business world has developed, certainly over maybe longer than 30 years but and maybe it's accelerated in the last 10 but we're all maxed out if i've noticed one thing is that i speak to senior people and boy are they busy and mm. i and i've you know like if i've talked to sort of hrds or whatever and i say to them you know one of the challenges of being maxed out is you're expecting senior people to think strategically or have some strategic foresight or be able to manage their people perhaps you've noticed they could be more effective in the way they manage them but but it's a challenge because their context is their heads down going at 100 miles an hour and the problem with that is when you're the analogy of the dance floor and the balcony, you know, if you're down on the dance floor all of the time, you're just not giving yourself a chance to spot the data that's out there behaviorally in order for yourself to make those adjustments. You know, even if you were self-aware enough to, to realize that you could make those adjustments and adapt your style to the situation and, and, and make it more appropriate to the purpose and you were dealing with. And I think that's a real nuts and bolts situation that we're really really maxed out you know back-to-back -back meetings zoom teams etc cetera, etc cetera. and i just think it's a it's a you know i just wonder I, i'd be really curious to get your take on this i just wonder how many times people go on say a, something to do with disc they've been trained on you know having greater appreciation of their style and being able to to no, notice other people's styles so they got gone on the training, but you know, with, within within a couple of days, we're back to full on 100 miles an hour, and I just completely ignore the the uh, the development I just attended. Yeah, yeah, I think it's um, it's common, I, I, but I think it's been common forever. So I, I, I think as well there is this. Yeah, I think where people are maxed out, but I think pre Zoom days and pre remote working days, they were maxed out with meetings, physical meetings. Yeah, you know, there was there was there was often they were maxed out. But I think now it sort of dialed it up to a whole new a whole new level. Because I think of this lack of social interaction that happens in between these interactions now, I think is the is the biggest issue. Um, but I think one of the things that's really important, and we, we're working really hard on this at the moment. And one of the things with something like disc and particularly sort of everything disc is that we're trying to move from this once and done activity to something we've talked about it being a return and learn so it's not that we can just say we did disc what we want to get to is where we talk to help people say we use disc yeah and so the, the, the new platform that we have catalyst um actually is a tool an ever-evolving tool at the moment that really allows people to drop in at any point and go do you know what that meeting with with Joe 
didn't quite go the way I was expecting it to. We seemed to misfire. We just missed each other somewhere. Let me go and have a look at Joe's disc profile, create a comparison between him and me so that we can actually say, well, look, this is where we're similar, but this is where we're vastly different. And actually, do you know what? The differences weren't the issue this time. It was the similarities that were the problem because what we all wanted to do, or what both of us wanted to do, was to put our point across and we fell out of listening mode and we were doing on full transmit and did nothing more. And so, but actually by being able to then say, you know, when next time we meet, Joe, I had a look at your disc profile and I can see, you know, what we need to do now to get on or to be more productive in the way that, that our relationship goes can be really helpful. So I think there's always a danger with any of these tools that they become a, as I said, a once and done, a tick box exercise. Interesting. And and I think, you know, one of the things that we're, we're passionate about, and I know you are as well, is that is that when we train, we use a, a sort of a three stage process. You know, really, you know me, Joe, it's going to be simple. Um, you know, understand yourself, understand others, do something about it, you know, and, and that's the that's the model for actually learning about this. But we do need to give people the tools to be able to do that last part as well. Gary, um, I could talk for hours about this with you because I just feel that it 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 kind of overlaps. And we haven't touched on organizational culture or team culture. We haven't talked about how teams operate, thinking about the styles. We haven't even talked about how we might engage people more and, and feel and enable them to feel that they really want to be here because of the 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 styles that surround them and and how they connect with with people at, at work i feel that we could talk for hours about it but i just wanted to thank you very much for the time and for exploring this and and um you know for for your insights brilliant uh, it's been a real it's been a real pleasure maybe we can save those uh, those topics for another day and yeah uh, definitely i think we ought to come back to all of this stuff yeah. i think there's a lot here to unpick but for the meantime brilliant look after yourself i'll catch up with you soon cheers joe take it easy that's been a terrific chat but i really do think i'm gonna have to lie down in a dark room and mull it all over again in the meantime you can tap below to get the links and show notes and if you enjoyed what you heard and you want to hear more, why not follow or subscribe to the show, share the podcast, or tell your friends about Gobbo. But most importantly, I'd love to hear from you. You can find me, Joe Espana, on LinkedIn or get in touch via the website. I'd love to keep the conversation going. Let me have your thoughts, questions, or ideas for topics you'd like me to cover in future episodes. 